Alright guys, what's up? Um, I felt like making another video. I'm not ready to make picks yet. I'm not ready for week two action, but it was a weird week one, so I want to make another video. First, first I did have fun at the concert. It was actually a Black Crows concert. I'm, I watched the first 12 minutes of the Viking Packers game and the last five minutes of the Broncos Raiders game, so I don't got a lot to say there. Besides what was clearly obvious, you know, Rodgers looked good, Packers were able to run the ball reasonably well given who they were playing, um, you know, the Vi Adrian Peterson looked good, Tavares had his moments, but then he showed you why he was Tavares. Um, <clears throat> it was a good game, obviously, came down to the very end, and then Tavares showed you why he was Tavares, um, you know, Denver blew out Oakland. I. I kind of went on a gut feeling with that Denver pick, and it ended up paying off. Um, no blitzing from Oakland. Lots of pressure on Russell. Uh, D'Angelo Hall got eaten alive by Eddie Royal all day and all night. Um, tragic times in Oak Town, but um, it's just week one. So I wrapped up the week with 10-6. and six. So there you go. That's not bad for week one. I will take that on week one. Pretty much any any week one of any NFL season. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So, that being said, body bag week. It was a nasty body bag week. And we know that in the NFL, injuries are really common part of the game. we kind of gotten used to it by now, but it was a body bag week. Not even counting the preseason stuff you had. You know, just on Seattle, and we have a stack of injuries right now. Burleson's out for the year, which... <laughs> uh, Morris is going to miss some time. Rob Sims gets put on IR. You know, it, it, it gets worse and worse every day. I wake up and there's no more bad news. I It sucks. I, I, I'm feeling a little down right now over all of it, too. But, um... And, you know, we got other injury issues, too. You know, we already know about Branch and Engram. They should be back any week. Um, I, I don't know what's up with Chris Spencer, if he's, you know, what he's bringing or not right now. I mean, he sure looked injured while he was trying to play against, like, Marcus Stroud. That was ugly. Ugly. <sighs> um, and... You know, obviously Tom Brady got hurt. Brody Croyle got hurt. Um, Marcus Colston's going to be out a while. Uh, he had the th in thumb injury. He's going to be out for like a month to s two months. Ouch. But I think the Saints can survive. Vince, uh, Vince Young got hurt. It was a it was a body bag week. And it really goes to show you how chaotic this league is. And this happens in other sports too. But, you know... If this is the year that Seattle is knocked off the perch and some other team takes the division, if that happens, it could, it's going to be like a slow, painful death. Um, we're slowly losing these players that we need one by one. This guy, that guy, this guy. Oh, and uh, I, I should mention we signed Billy McMullen and Sammy Parker. You know, not too bad. Beggars can't be choosers right now, and we're desperate in our wide receiver core. So... That's not bad. I kind of wanted somebody like Terry Glenn or Joe Horn, but um, and oh, uh, Corn Robinson might resign. I really want to see Corn Robinson come back. I think that would be awesome. I mean, he had his issues with us, but he produced. He had his moments. He can make plays, and he's got talent. So bring him back and hope for the best. But um, really goes to show you about this league. Maybe we're dying a slow death, and New England they just. You know, we're walking down the street feeling fine, and all of a sudden their head got cut off. <coughs> it was over in an instant for them. I mean, this is assuming that Matt Cassell doesn't turn into the next great thing. Again, Seattle could still win their division. Uh, New England could still win their division. The divisions are not that great. Maybe they're better than previous years, but they're still not that great. So don't think it's impossible. And an injury like that really helps put everything into perspective and seem like our own injuries seem insignificant in comparison because as ugly as it is for us right now, 
when you see a future Hall of Famer, likely, I know I'm gonna, I know somebody already disagreed with me there. I maintain, however, that Tom Brady is not a first ballot lock for the Hall of Fame as of this moment. People need to at least play for a few more years, simply because Terrell Davis is not in. But let's not get into that. That's a debate for another time. But it puts into perspective that when a guy like that can lose a year, a full year of his career in his prime, it, it makes you think, kind of. So, really, the most interesting thing so far about Week 1 at least in off the fe in terms of off the field is Vince Young and remind you how human these players are and for those of you who don't know basically what's happened is uh Vince you know he tried to take himself out of the game after getting booed after throwing a second interception he was getting booed by the home crowd and he wanted to take himself out kind of like uh, the legendary Leon in those old Budweiser commercials where he was talking to the announcer the one time he was like well you know after I put that ball on the ground the fans they were booing and you know that hurt my feelings so I told the coach I needed a little Leon time so I went into the locker room to just drink a cup of tea and let it go it was kinda like that and he got hurt a couple plays later and he did come out and then I guess the police had to search for him for four hours he was lost somewhere they couldn't find him they couldn't figure out where he was and I guess he was just moping or something with his, I guess with his mom. And you don't see this happen that often. This is weird. This is like kind of new territory. Sean Andrews, his offseason stuff was a little like this. But this is in the middle of the season, just as the season starts with a marketable, well-known player. And, you know, maybe he's not as good as he needs to be yet. But still, he's well-known in the NFL. He's a very marketable and he's important to what the Titans um, are g trying to do this season so um, what can you say about something like this you don't really know you gotta I guess you really have to be there to be able to say anything definitive definitive but I can put my money but you know Kerry Collins can win a, some games he's not gonna lead you to a Super Bowl but he'll do some right things he'll hand the ball off well, hit some open targets. She could do worse than Kerry Collins, but as for Vince, sometimes I wonder how much he really loves this game. I mean, he played it in college. He liked it in college, I think. He was obviously really good um, at the college level, but at the college level, you're not playing it for money. You're playing it because it's fun and because, uh, because you like it and you're good at it. So... Now that he's in the NFL where he does it for a living, um, I wonder to myself, does he really love this game a lot? Does he really want to do this for the rest of his life? Guys like Peyton Manning was is a guy who was obviously willing to do that for a living. He just eats it up. and You have guys who love to play the game and just have a blast while doing it. Like, uh, you know, I... I can't think of a great example right now, but there are definitely those guys. I think John Elway was one of those guys. They just love it. They have fun. And then when they retire, they have a hard time getting away from the game. A good example of that's like uh, Steve Young. He retired, and he went to go broadcast. He went to work for ESPN. Keyshawn Johnson, uh, Emmett Smith, etc., etc. So you got to either love the game or be able to really get yourself into it. And maybe Vince Young just isn't that guy, and... After signing that huge contract, after being such a huge part of the future hopes of the Titans, for him to suddenly come out in his third season, especially after last year. For those of you who don't know, last offseason, he contemplated retiring from the NFL because he just didn't know if he could take it. And now this. Can he take the pressures of the NFL? It doesn't seem like it. He gets booed and he can't take that. And just in general, the pressures of the, you know, the work it takes to be in the NFL, the pressures of being a uh, starting quarterback in the NFL, I can kind of understand why that might happen to somebody. And, you know, this is just weird. This doesn't happen that often. I don't think I've seen it happen in my lifetime. So if Vince Young does this weird, weird spiraling thing while he's out injured, and then he decides to retire in a month or two or maybe at the end of the season, that would be surreal. Now, we all hope he'll come back 
with more fire under him than ever and leads the Titans to a Super Bowl. Maybe. Maybe not this year. I mean, I know the Dallas fans out there want to see the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, but you know what I'm saying. So, it's going to be interesting. And this isn't this isn't orthodox. This is very unorthodox. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, things work out for the best. That's all I'm going to say for now. So, see you later.